still going. So that's statements, I statements, effective questions when something goes wrong, being able to have kids um, talk out loud. And the next one is uh, small impromptu conversations. And um, that is um, something quick and easy. They're proactive. You can do them to get to know people, sort of like we did, excuse me, or you're a teacher and you know you have two kids going out in the back of the class. You, you can send them down to the office because they're at each other's pen and they're causing a ruckus. You pull them outside really quickly and have a conversation. You can use the questions. What happened? He called me a name. He's like, yeah, I called him a name. Well, what were you doing there at the time? I was tagging and kicking my chair. He's like, kicking his chair? What do you mean? I was affected by this. You are, I'm not teaching in your class right now. What do you have to do to fix it? And you can do that whole thing you know, in a minute to a minute and a half, you've addressed it. You heard about the kicking because you could address the second behavior, right? Because it's always something that was the impetus of it. But you need to address the kicking of the chair, separate the kids, get back to class. We're not sending anybody down to the office. We can get back to work. So those are small impromptu conversations or conferences that you can have. Two people, three people, quickly in the hallway, out of the classroom, um, something at a recess get really good, kids do this together by themselves. Very easy. The next thing is um, circle, which is what, when we think about restorative practices, people think about two things. You're talking in a circle about something bad that happened or some incident, right, or consequence. As you can see, it's certainly a thing you can do, but it's so expensive. I typically do not have a meeting at all for any person or age group that I don't put us in circle because I need to hear everyone's voice all the time. It's not weird, trust me. You guys did it, it was fun. So the types of circle that we have kind of are endless. This is a grouping of some ways you can use um, circles for community building, um, teaching and learning. Oh my goodness, there is nothing you can't ask a number of kids like, you read this movie, I mean, read this book. What do you know about it already? You can do pre-test, post-test. What was the hardest thing about it? What's the word you don't know? Um, what are the five phases of You can ask those things. Anything can be put in a circle to gather what's happening and to get knowledge, um, which is one of my favorite ways to do is teaching and learning. I did it with you. I needed to hear what you knew, and I got that quickly and easily. It didn't take a long time to set up, and yet I heard from everybody. Celebrations, staff coming or going. Um, I know we did it for students that were like leaving or moving to a different place. We might have a circle and give that, you know, words of encouragement. And of course, the last two, which are the 20%, Start being responsive. There's been a behavior or conflict. Um, someone is either re entering the school or the classroom, and you can stop and say, ask the questions, process everything. Um, um, what I was going to say about that um, okay, come back story. I didn't really hear a story. There's a um, saying, a proverb that talks about um, a child will burn down the village to feel its warmth. You ever had a kid that just does something wrong and just keeps going faster, further, far, harder towards the wrong direction? And what we learn in restorative practices is no matter what they're saying, they want to be back in the good graces. And if we return kids to school without addressing, hey, that thing occurred, you're good, that was yesterday, it's over, we need you back in school. If you kind of come in like, you know what? What you did last week when you were here, not going to happen today. You know, it's a bit old school. That is not the restorative way. Glad to have you back um, with us. Looking forward to it. How have you been feeling since then? And you, because things happen, incidents occur, and you have to bring kids back ready to learn, even back from a recess incident. Um, we need to be regulated enough to get back in class because our, our, we would love to not uh, kick kids out if we don't need to. There are certain things, yeah, that's gonna happen. And even with those things that are suspension automatic, you must use restorative practices to bring them back. So it's not like, yes, everybody knows. That kid was suspended for five days, no big deal. Everybody knows. Now you're walking around like, no, oh, that's awkward. Having some sort of a mechanism to say, we're good here. That was last week, all good, um, is really great. So those are the types of circles. Sorry, circles uh, on my soapbox. So as we talked about, Proactive circles are hopefully 80% of what you're doing. You're building community. You can use it for schoolwork, um, processing things in class, but it's 80% of the time, and they're intentional. Responsive circles, sorry about the, the little international thing in there. 
um, are only 20% of the time, as we talked about, and they're intentional addressing conflict. Um, I don't know what any of those. I think people don't think about the grief and loss when somebody has, hello, welcome, good to see you. Um, that when things happen, it's a great way to process something that occurred. Um, we've done so in administrator meetings if something is going on in the community or some big thing happened or on the news, you know, we need to process, it's hard for us. Like being able to answer the questions, what did you think when it happened? Um, it's a great way to process if you don't have grief. So those are our responses. So here's two examples. I think the next two, all right. Um, a proactive circle example, I'll let you read that when a teacher might want to address respect in the classroom. Things are getting out of hand. I think I'm gonna plan a circle for tomorrow. Here are the questions I'm gonna ask. Or sorry, this is not a, this is a proactive, this is us talking about what it means to be respectful in our classroom, which is important because people have different, right, uh, different definitions of what respect is. So this is just an example of what you could do with a proactive circle. Here's another one, using content. I was talking about science earlier, I probably should have maybe done states that matter, not cell division. Circles to process content. Oh, I didn't have the one. Oh, I wanted the one. Okay, well, point is um, the same thing. Um, I was cutting out slides. If I change that to reactive, could be a recess incident. Let's talk about the incident on the recess. I need to ask the teacher who saw it what happened, and you could put in questions for the teacher to understand what occurred. So I'm going to stop there because I could go on a little bit. The next slides are kind of like, well, where are we as a district with all of this information? And those are open question and answer, okay? So again, do it at a high level. So where have we been? Uh, this training came to us in 2017 by the Glo Global Learners Initiative. Um, I'm not sure who saw it first, um, but there were 45 people trained immediately in February 2017. And then people came in and said, oh my gosh, this has changed everything. This is fantastic, we need to do it for better people. As a mom who had three teenage daughters with technology, I've had to have some interesting conversations with them and with using restorative uh, questions, being able to say, tell me what happened. So immediately, instead of asking why or what did you do, when you ask a kid to give you the words in their own words, you know exactly what to address. So when my child is talking about um, not receiving attention, and then I say, well, what were you thinking? I just wanted some attention. Like, when you're 16, you can express that, right? And now I'm not, yelling and throwing the book at him, maybe taking the phone for a while, but we can have a conversation about the why of your actions that they give you. And what do you think we should do? I probably need to get off my phone for a couple weeks, right? That was her response. Guess what? You still got the consequences, but we're still in a relationship. We're not walking around the house avoiding each other because we did so in a restorative way. It is fantastic to ask those questions to your kids. Try it, go home tomorrow, say, look, what happened? what were you thinking at the time? Don't, people, don't tell them what you were thinking at the time, which is flattering. Okay, so that was it. We, oh, so sorry, approximately 600. Oh, did my phone ring? Uh, sorry, didn't get to write it in. I had to do tally marks, and it was 504. Approximately 504 people in the district have been trained so far. I had to use some GLI notes for the push we've done over the last two years. We're probably 504 people trained so far since 2017. Attrition being what it is, people have left. Leaderships have changed. It is not, um, I don't know this indicative and I can give you a percentage of what that means now. That number may not be 500, it may be more like 1,500. Um, and then we talked about being IARP certified. Where are we now? So that was kind of the past. Um, was going really well. COVID hit and we weren't touching, talking or gathering. So 2019-20, that year stopped. So 2021, there was no training going on. Then we started back up 21-22. So we're getting started. So we have retrained trainings this year. So excited we have more secondary participants because as you are in this space as adults, uh, secondary kind of like, oh, that sounds like kumbaya, a long hug. Like we don't do that in secondary land, but we have had secondary, a few more secondary people join because it's important. You can talk about cell division in a circle. Um, and connect with people um, that way. 
we also are in a study with MSU who said, hey, we think this is really important that schools become more restorative. Would you join our research study? We're gonna take some surveys, ask kids, ask uh, staff members what they know about it, how they're using it, um, and give you some data. Well, I won't get that data until June, but we, I really would love to be a restorative district. We're not there yet. So I'm gonna get a report out in June. Um, new teachers will be trained in the fall um, as they come in, because it's easy to do. I'd like to pursue being a restorative district. However, um, what else did I say I was gonna do? Hold on. So this is not a district mandate, um, if that makes sense. So we don't have, um, like, all schools will be trained in restorative practices. So we don't have everyone trained. Everyone's not signed up to be trained. So it's not being used the same way across the board. Again, I think we're on a good pass, uh, path right before um, COVID. And since then, and we'll have new leadership. We'll see how they're feeling about it. But right now, it's offered three times a year. Um, and it's fantastic. But we're not there yet. So, but currently, we have staff that are using it for community building, content strategy, responding to behaviors um, that may result in harm. Um, it's an option, as we just talked about. And it also, and I'm not sure if you all know about it, restorative practices is a part of the state kind of legislature. That's kind of hard to see um, when you want a picture of it. But basically it says, hey, if you're getting ready to suspend a student um, or expel a student, you have to, you are required by the state to consider restorative practices as a part of that disciplinary action. Use it in conjunction with. A lot of people say, well, restorative practice and that's all, not, um, that's all that happens. And it's like, well, not necessarily. It also says you can use it for other things, you know, try to use it because it worked. It helps us to figure out what was the intention behind the act and so that we don't have it happen again. Because that's the whole thing, like things just keep happening. Kids that um, skip or have problems on the playground, they just keep repeating it. We just keep talking about the same behaviors. Restorative practice wants to get rid of that. So um, it is something that's a part of our so if there's an incident and we type it up, restorative practices is both um, something that you can say I did to respond to the behavior, and it also came with other responses to behavior. So it can be the thing that happened, but it can also be a part of a menu of steps and or consequences. But we like to use it as much as possible. There's no reason not to. Even if you're being suspended, restorative practice is a great way to make sure you caught everything, that you know everything that's happening. So, 